Over a quarter of a million women lose their lives to cervical cancer every year. Yet simple screening tests could prevent some of these deaths by detecting precancerous changes on the cervix before they develop into cancer. Medical Aid Films has produced two films on cervical cancer screening. It might be useful to watch the other film first as it introduces all the different tests and treatments. The film you are about to watch demonstrates how to perform the two visual inspection screening tests. Visual inspection with acetic acid or VIA and visual inspection with Lugol's iodine or Vili. We are going to hear questions from health workers about how to perform the screenings. Then, at the end of this film, we'll ask you some questions to see if you've learned the answers by watching this film. What should I do when I first meet my patient? Before you start any screening, it is important that you reassure your patient by explaining why the screening is necessary. You should discuss the procedure and explain each step. You should advise the woman that she may feel some discomfort and that there may be some mild side effects from the procedure. Can you give a step-by-step -step explanation of how to do a VIA? First, you need to prepare your equipment and examination room. You'll need a light source, cotton swabs on a stick, a small container, 5% vinegar or acetic acid, gloves and a speculum. 5% acetic acid is prepared by adding 5 ml of glacial acetic acid into 95 ml of distilled water. If you are using vinegar bought from a store then make sure the vinegar is labelled as 5%. Ideally, the brand should also be tested by a laboratory to check it is actually 5%. You'll need to make sure that all the equipment you use has been properly decontaminated and disinfected. Once you have the equipment and examination room ready, you can have the woman get into position while you wash your hands and put on your gloves. The woman will need to lie on an examination table or bed in the lithotomy position with her legs open and her knee supported. If leg supports are not available, a chair can be used to support her legs by putting her feet on the edge of the chair. Before you insert the speculum, you should first examine the external genitalia and perineal region for any signs of sexually transmitted diseases or abrasions. Then insert the speculum gently into the vagina. You do this by holding the speculum blades together and slipping them into the vagina. Be careful not to press on the urethra or clitoris because these areas are very sensitive. Gently open the blades and look for the cervix. Move the speculum slowly and gently until you can see the entire cervix. Lock the speculum in the open position so it will stay in place. If there are secretions on the cervix, gently wipe them off with a cotton swab. Using a new cotton swab, next you need to apply the 5% vinegar or acetic acid to the cervix. You do this by the gentle but firm application of a cotton swab soaked in the vinegar or the acetic acid and you apply that directly onto the surface of the cervix. It is important to note the time. You should leave the cotton swab resting on the cervix for one full minute. Immediately after removing the swab, observe the cervix for any white lesions. If you see any, observe the time again and start timing as you will want to be sure a lesion is still there after one minute. If it is not there after one minute, it is more likely to be squamous metaplasia and not pre-cancer. A pre-cancer lesion will stay distinctly white. This is called acetowhite and will occur within the transformation zone. It will have clear borders and it starts at the squamocolumnar junction or SCJ. The SCJ 
is the intersection between the endocervix and the ectocervix and is where abnormalities start. Normal cells remain pink after applying the acetic acid. When you're observing the cervix, you should ask yourself the following questions. Is it suspicious for cancer? Do I see a VIA positive lesion? Can I see the entire SCJ? If not, then you may not be able to get an accurate result. Other questions to ask are, what is the location of the lesion? Is it in, near or far away from the SCJ? Does it extend into the cervical canal? Does it involve the entire cervix or extend beyond the surface of the cervix? If the answer to either of the last two questions is yes, then the woman may not be eligible for cryotherapy and will need to be referred for further treatment. Once you have finished your observations, withdraw the speculum gently. You should then dispose of all contaminated swabs, gauze and other waste material into a plastic bag, in a plastic bucket or a clinical waste bin. Gloves should be decontaminated by soaking in 0.5% chlorine. It is also important that you wipe down any surfaces that may have been contaminated with blood or body fluids with chlorine solution. The floor should also be cleaned daily. You will also need to make sure that your equipment has been properly decontaminated and disinfected before your next patient. You do this by fully submerging the speculum and other instruments in a plastic container filled with 0.5% chlorine solution for 10 minutes. 0.5% chlorine is made up of one part 3.5% bleach to six parts water. Scrub the speculum afterwards in clean water and detergent and then rinse thoroughly. Carry out a high level disinfection by soaking the instruments again in 0.5% chlorine for 10 to 20 minutes. If they're left longer than this, they may begin to corrode. Rinse again with clean water and allow to air dry and cover with a clean cloth. Alternatively, you can boil equipment in water for 30 minutes. If boiling water is used, the speculum should be left to cool at room temperature before use. These procedures will greatly reduce the risk of transmitting infection to the patient. Where the observations tell me if the test is positive or negative for precancer. Yes, your observations will tell you if the test is positive or negative for precancer, but not for cancer. However, during your observations, it is sometimes possible that you may see a lesion that is suspicious for cancer. Can you tell me what positive and negative results look like? This is a normal cervix and it has been given a negative result. Notice that it has a healthy pink colour, clear mucus coming from the cervical os and no acetal-white areas seen at all after VIA. This is a precancerous cervix. You will notice that it is reddish in colour. The aceto white changes are quite clearly demarcated. The opaque aceto white areas, which are well demonstrated here at the squamous columnar junction, indicates this is a VIA positive cervix. We're now going to ask you to identify some positive and negative results. You have 10 seconds to answer before being given the correct information.
Are there any other visual screening tests we should know about? Yes, another method is the visual inspection with Lugol's iodine or Vili. The steps are the same as for VIA, but instead of applying acetic acid, you wash the cervix with Lugol's iodine solution. If abnormalities are present, they appear almost immediately as well-defined and thick, and are mustard or golden yellow in colour, while the normal cells stain brown or black. This is a positive result using Vili on this cervix. There is a mustard yellow lesion with no iodine uptake in the anterior lip, touching upon the squamous columnar junction. If you open up the junction, you will probably notice that that area of yellow will extend further deep into the canal, and it is wise to always check as to whether this is the case or not. There are patchy, no iodine uptake areas scattered all over the cervix, not restricted to the transformation zone. This is characteristic of chronic cervicitis. This is a negative result for cervical cancer. We are now going to ask you to identify some positive and negative results from the Vili test. You have 10 seconds to answer before being given the correct information. Often, VIA and VILI are conducted together. If VIA indicates a positive or suspicious for cancer result, VILI is sometimes conducted to confirm this. VIA must always be performed first as the iodine used in VILI stains the cervix. What should we do after the examination? Depending on what you have observed during VIA or VILI, you may need to refer the woman for further investigation or treatment. A woman with a positive lesion should be treated that day with cryotherapy if possible. It may also be necessary to carry out further investigations such as a colposcopy and biopsy. A woman with a lesion suspicious for cancer should be referred to the closest referral site for diagnosis and treatment. Remember, it is important to reassure the patient and inform them about further treatment or side effects following the procedure. So you should now be familiar with the two visual methods for cervical screening and what the results of these tests look like. This will help you in correctly performing VIA and VILI and in identifying the results. If you haven't already seen the other film in the series, you may want to watch it now. This film describes further cervical cancer screening tests and treatments.